Guys, Star Fox 2 is getting officially released. Okay, let's have some context on the situation. You remember the NES Classic? Well, now they're gonna come out with the SNES Classic. Yay, I guess? Alright, the situation with the NES Classic, for me, was I was not that interested. Primarily because the NES Classic only had HDMI output. And at the time, I did not have a TV with HDMI input. And eventually I did get such a TV, but by then it was too late. The scalpers had already gotten a hold of the NES Classic and there was no way I was getting one of them. Which is a shame because it was a cool little thing. It contained 30 classic NES games and it was a pretty good selection overall. Not perfect, there were definitely a few noteworthy exceptions, or not exceptions, omissions. But still, it was pretty cool. And then of course, Nintendo decided to cancel it all of a sudden, despite it still being selling like hotcakes. And that's probably because of this thing. They're now going to release the Super Nintendo Classic Edition, which is releasing September 29th for 80 bucks. It's a little on the expensive side, but I have a feeling it will definitely be worth it. And the reason why is, of course, the game selection. Now scrolling down, I'm not going to read all this, though I will point out that it says that it comes with 21 games, compared to the NES Classic, which had 30. So it's 9 less games, and this thing is actually more expensive? Again, it's probably worth it. So let's go ahead and skip down some more. I'll have a link below in the description to the site that I'm looking at, by the way. This is the official Nintendo site. Now then, let's take a look at the games. Well, let's see here. You know, let's just skip down to the... The... Thing. This. Skip down to this. For the first time ever, play the never-before-released Star Fox 2. Now this is exciting. So, Star Fox, for those not aware, originated on the Super Nintendo, and it was a technical achievement because it was a 3D game on a 2D console. And, uh, it was, well, it was technically neat, but I'm not a huge fan because that game is kind of painful to play. However, they wound up making Star Fox 2, and then they did not release it. Supposedly, it was because Star Fox 2 would have released way too close to the Nintendo 64 release and it's like well we have this Super Nintendo 3D game which doesn't look great while we have the Nintendo 64 which does look great so let's just scrap this game and we'll make a new Star Fox game on the Nintendo 64 and that new Star Fox game wound up being a reboot and this is a shame because Star Fox 2 was an interesting looking game it wasn't quite the same game as most of the Star Fox games, it was more along the lines of, oh, whatever that game is on the, the DS, that strategic Star Fox game. It was kind of like that, rather than going through mission to mission in a linear fashion like most Star Fox games, you actually had these little mini missions that you had to go to across the map, and while you're doing these mini missions, Andros, the main bad guy, is like shooting missiles and stuff over at Planet Corneria, and so you need to hurry up and get these little missions out of the way while also defending Corneria, and it was definitely interesting. Now, the prototype for this game actually did release. It got leaked on the internet, and as far as we can tell, it's mostly complete. So, as far as I'm aware, the actual Star Fox 2 really was completely complete, so supposedly this release on the Super Nintendo Classic is going to be better than the prototype that is leaked on the internet. And I'm kind of curious to see what all is changed, whether there's like newer missions or more likely refinements to the gameplay, like better controls or better hit detection. So yeah, the fact that Star Fox 2 is getting officially released on this thing, that alone makes this worth the $80, I think. Good news is, that's not alone. There are 20 other games, so let's go through these real quick. Super Mario World, that's a fun game. I played it on Twitch one time in one sitting, 100%. I feel pretty accomplished about that. 
Super Mario Kart was the first Mario Kart, and although the controls are kind of slippery looking back, and the AI isn't very smart because they only knew how to use one item, and unfortunately for a couple of characters, that one item was a superstar. But still, I love this game back in the day, I rented it just about more than any other game on the Super Nintendo, outside of maybe... Final Fantasy 2. I also rented that one a lot. We also have The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past because of course we gotta have that game. It's one of the best Zelda games. Plot wise, not a whole lot going on, but back in the day and for a long time to come, this Zelda game had probably the best exploration out of all the Zelda games. At least until Breath of the Wild. F-Zero is a game that I never really played, and some people say that it's more or less a tech demo of sorts, like an elaborate tech demo, not really a full-fledged game. Although from what I've seen of the game, I kind of disagree. There is a full-fledged game there. Maybe it is kind of a tech demo to show off the Super Nintendo's 3D capabilities, well, the early 3D capabilities, Star Fox aside but it does look like it would be an interesting game to play. Super Metroid, of course, is the Metroid game that all following Metroid games try to follow its standard, or something like that. In terms of, like, atmosphere and exploration, this game is definitely great. Mind you, in terms of atmosphere and exploration, most of the Metroid games are great. But this one, yeah, this one is the one that set the standard for 2D Metroids to come. I actually used to own this game, and in fact, I really enjoyed it, but apparently I must have sold the game, and I regret selling it so much that I actually don't remember selling it. It's kind of weird. And then we get to more games right down here. So let's see here, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Edition? Yeah, that's the Turbo Edition. I don't really care so much about that, I'm generally not into fighting games with a few exceptions. Mash Brothers, Bloody Roar, and Soul Calibur. And that's about all the fighting games that I was able to get into. Though, once again, in regards to setting standards, this is the fighting game that sets standards for fighting games. Of course, Street Fighter 2 is also known for setting the standard of Street Fighter games having multiple way too many releases. Like there was Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, there's the Street Fighter 2 remake on Nintendo Switch. I'm not sure which release the Turbo Edition is. Is it the last version that was released on Super Nintendo or was there another one? After that, we got Super Punch-Out. Again, it's not a game that I'm that interested in, aside from the fact that it exists. You always hear people talk about Punch-Out on the NES, but you don't hear very many people talk about the Super Nintendo Punch-Out. In fact, I didn't even know this existed until a few years ago. And then after that, we have Super Castlevania 4, one of the best Castlevania games, although I personally prefer Rondo of Blood. And in regards to the Metroidvania games, I don't even think it's a fair comparison. We're just talking about the classic style Castlevania games. This one, one of the best. And then we have Donkey Kong Country, because of course we gotta have Donkey Kong Country. It is what put Donkey Kong back on the map. In regards to the Donkey Kong Country series, it is a little on the simple side comparatively to the rest. You're basically just running through these simple yet slightly elaborate levels where you're just running and jumping on enemies and occasionally climbing on ropes and getting shot out of barrels. Although, personally, the getting shot out of barrels part is one of my favorite parts. And really, I like the simplicity. Sometimes you don't really need a complex game to play. Sometimes I just want to run and jump through levels. Unfortunately, it does not seem that any other Donkey Kong Country game is on here. I don't mind the admission of Donkey Kong Country 3, but the admission of Donkey Kong Country 2? Definitely unfortunate, because that is my personal favorite. And we have a similar situation with Mega Man X. We don't get any other Mega Man X games, just the first one. Likewise, we don't get Mega Man 7 either. That said, Mega Man X is definitely a cool game, even if it did cause some confusion over whether this was Mega Man X or Mega Man 10. 
Alright, Kirby Superstar, once again, an amazing game, or rather, an amazing selection of games. Is it one game, or is it eight games? Because in this game, there's a whole bunch of little games, and each one of them follows their own roles. I mean, the whole situation with Kirby copying abilities is all there, but then they change things up in, like, how you copy abilities, how you explore the levels, Sometimes there's a time limit, sometimes you're going treasure hunting. It's kind of weird, but at the same time, I like it. I like that little bit of variety in this one Kirby game. Although, admittedly, I still would prefer to play a full Kirby adventure rather than eight little ones. For example, Kirby's Adventure. Next up, Final Fantasy 3, which unfortunately is called Final Fantasy 3 because, you know, just because we all know this is Final Fantasy 6 doesn't mean they're willing to change the title screen on this Super Nintendo re-release. It's kind of a shame that Final Fantasy 2 slash 4 is not on here because I kind of prefer that one. That said, Final Fantasy 3 slash 6 is probably the best choice of the two because this game is so much bigger, one of the most epic stories in a Final Fantasy, especially considering, well, I won't really spoil that. And then there's Kirby's Drink Course. That's an odd choice. It's basically Kirby's Mini Golf. If they could include Kirby's Drink Course, you have to wonder why they couldn't include some of the other random games that appeared on Super Nintendo. Like Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, or... Okay, let's have a better example. Tetris Attack. Would have loved to see Tetris Attack on this. Oh, by the way, the original Star Fox is also on here. Cause, you know, if we're gonna have Star Fox 2, you might as well have Star Fox 1. After that, there's Yoshi's Island, which is a game that I'd really like to be able to let's play someday, either here at YouTube or over at Twitch. This is probably my favorite of the Yoshi games. It made Yoshi all cute and stuff, and... Okay, maybe Baby Mario's crying is annoying, but the point is you're not supposed to let him get to a point that he will cry. Don't get hit! It's also worth noting that this is the first time that the Super Nintendo version of Yoshi's Island is getting re-released. When Yoshi's Island hit the Virtual Console, they decided to port the Game Boy Advance version instead. Although the Game Boy Advance version is not bad, they give Yoshi that cute little voice, and they also added six whole new levels, so... Overall, I think the Game Boy Advance version is a little bit better for that reason. And also because of the voice. And I gotta mention going for 100%. Boy, is that a slog. If you're not interested in slogging, this game is probably worth playing not for 100%. Personally, I always go for 100%. It might take 20 minutes to beat a single level, but it's worth it for me. After that, Super Mario RPG. Heck yeah. This was actually my first RPG, because up until this point, RPGs did not interest me. They looked kind of weird, there was all these confusing menus with all these numbers, and it's like, what the heck? This is not the happy-go-lucky, jump-on-enemies-heads Mario platformer that I'm used to. And even when Nintendo Power covered this game, it was like, this looks so weird, what is up with these character models? Is that an anthropomorphic bow with googly eyes? And then my grandpa wound up getting the game one Christmas, and this became one of my favorite games for a while. I wound up playing it so much that nowadays the game is just too easy for me, and... Well, that's how I wound up playing a ROM hack of that game. And then came to appreciate the original because the ROM hack was... Not great. I mean, it was okay, but it really made me appreciate the balancing of the original. Okay, Contra 3. I'm not sure if I've ever played a Contra game, but they do look pretty fun, so I would probably be interested in playing this. What I'm not interested in playing is Secret of Mana. I do not like this game. For one thing, the camera is awful. You go almost all the way to the edge of the screen before it starts scrolling. Second, the hit detection could definitely be better. Third, I absolutely hate the boss theme. Not the final boss scene, the final boss scene is awesome, just the regular boss scene. That said, I still think Square Enix should release the Seiken Detsetsu Collection. 
I might not be interested in Secret of Mana, but I do want to see Secret of Mana 2. And also Final Fantasy Adventure. After that, we got Earthbound, which, yeah, uh, kind of cool to see that. I wish they would release Mother 3 instead. I've never actually beaten Earthbound. In fact, I've only played up to 3, and I don't know anything about the rest of the game, aside from the final boss is supposedly interesting looking for some reason. It's like a background or something? Like the boss is the background? I actually tried Let's Playing this game a while back, but then I lost some recordings and it's like, okay, this is super frustrating, I'm not doing this. Eventually I'll have to try again, because I really want to beat this game sometime. By the way, I have the original, cost me $100, which, looking at how much this game is worth used nowadays, that was a pretty good deal, all things considered. Lastly, we have Super Goals and Ghosts. If I ever play this game, it's not going to be for the good ending. I'm just going to play it to play it because trying to get the good ending apparently sucks. So yeah, that's the games that we have on this here collection. Definitely some good choices, a few choices that I don't care about, and a few games that I wish would be on this list. Final Fantasy 2, Donkey Kong Country 2, Tetris Attack, Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse, that's a good one. Overall though, I can't really complain, especially given that Nintendo is finally releasing Star Fox 2 officially. Again, this thing is going to be releasing sometime in September, September 29th to be specific. Uh, it is not available for pre-orders yet, but when it goes up for pre-orders, you better pounce on it because you just know the scalpers are going to get this and things are going to be unfortunate and it's probably going to be almost impossible to find, much like the NES Classic was. I really don't think Nintendo is going to produce this better than the NES Classic. As a side note, I find it kind of interesting that this collection as a whole has gotten a teen rating. That technically means that games like Kirby Superstar now have a teen rating because it's part of this collection. That's kind of funny. Anyway, I'm done talking about this now. <laughs>